Hello and welcome to episode 12 of our Game Maker Studio 2 top-down shooter tutorial. And uh, basically where we're coming from is we added movement of our enemies to go left and right. And we added a little explode animation that plays um, a few frames, counts down about a quarter of a second, and then deletes itself, basically. And uh, a commenter mentioned we could also do an event that says when the animation ends destroy itself that works just as well um, I like having a little bit more control over the speed of it but you can also do that in the sprite so uh, to each his own wherever you want to do it uh, it's a great way to be more accurate about how it's done um, the the next thing we want to do is add HP for our player so that um, there's a way that our player can die because right now he's kind of invincible he can just go through stuff and uh, nothing really happens when he gets shot or anything. So first thing that we're going to do is create a new variable. And uh, we're just going to set assign variable. And we will call this HP. Easy enough. And that's set to, let's say, takes five hits. And he's down, down for the count. Okay, so we have two enemies right now. And we want to make sure that if he runs into either one of those, he's going to get hurt. So uh, we can actually... Nope, nope, we'll, we'll do this. <laughs> Starting slow, we won't get too in-depth. Let's see, let's uh, create a collision event with enemy 1. And we will say... Um, if you run into it, it's going to set our HP to minus one relative to whatever it was before and then we can uh, destroy instance but instead of destroying yourself because you definitely don't want to destroy yourself you can click on this down arrow and choose other and what that's going to do is it's going to destroy the enemy that you run into so let's uh, check if that works real quick we just need to make sure that the green enemy disappears when we run into it so there's a green enemy and it disappears when we run into it great and it doesn't with the blue one which is perfect because we haven't made it do that yet um, so we also have we, we can also spawn that little explosion if we wanted to when the enemy dies but uh, we'll, we'll wait on doing that so let's go ahead and make a collide event with our second enemy and do the same thing and a little trick here is to click on the first one, hold shift, click on the second one, and then you can control C to copy both of those. Jump over to enemy 2, control V to paste both of them. Alternatively, you can also right click on an event, copy the event, and then paste it down here, and um, it'll let you choose the different object to collide with. Um, we can also make a parent object and have all of these enemies underneath it, uh, which I could show you now. So if I create an object and call this um, object enemies, and then I go to parent and add this one and this one as its children, then I can go back up here and I can actually delete this event and I could change this event to collide with object enemies. So now if I collide with either one of these enemies, it should destroy the other enemy and take away one HP from your plane. So let's see if the blue ones disappear now. Yep, those ones disappear and the green ones disappear. So now we know that our code is affecting both enemies by using parents and child scripts. Um, another way that parent and child scripts are useful is if I were to add something in here to this object enemies that I wanted to just make work on all enemies, I could do that as well and say, if any of my enemies run into this power up, um, do something, right? Change an attribute, whatever it happens to be, which is really cool. Uh, it makes programming things a lot faster. But for our sake, we're just going to use it as kind of like a grouping mechanism to save some time, which it's really good for. So now we have, um, when you run into an enemy, they destroy. 
themselves, and we also take away 1 HP, but nothing happens when you're actually at 0 HP. So what we can do is we will add an event. Actually, no, no, we won't add an event. In the step event, we're just going to check to see if our player is dead. And um, so we're going to do if variable HP is equal is less than or equal to zero then we want to do something and we want to destroy itself if it's at zero so let's try that out so if we run into five enemies we should destroy ourselves and be dead so let's see one two three four and yep now our player's dead and we can't do anything um nothing's happening we can't control anything because the player's dead so we need a way to respawn now that we know that our HP is working. Um, so what we can do is we can create a new object. And this is a rudimentary way to do it. This is just the first way I thought of doing it. There's plenty of other ways of doing it with the control object or even even in the player object itself. But anyway, in the um, object, we're going to call it object respawn. And we're going to say... Uh, in the create event, we'll set a timer, we'll set a long countdown, and we'll set it to 60, about two seconds. And then we'll go to that alarm event, alarm zero. And what we're going to do there is reset the game. So, what this is going to do is when this Bonds, um, basically it's going to wait two seconds because our game's at 60 frames a second and then uh, restart the game. So over here in our player uh, where it says if HP is less than or equal to zero, destroy itself. Right before it destroys itself, we're going to spawn that um, instance. We're going to spawn the respawner, if you will. So go over here and choose the object respawn. Doesn't matter where it spawns and should be good like that so let's try it out so if I run into five enemies oops that's three that's four I'm dead and the game restarts and that was a very quick two seconds but let's try that again so I hit one two three four five Yep, so it restarted very quickly. So if we wanted to change that, we could do that as well. Uh, let's go over to our respawn object. And let's change this to 120. Oh yeah, 60 frames a second is one second. Duh, so two seconds is 120. Sorry, I had a little brain fart there. Um, 120 frames is uh, how long we need to wait. So let's try this one more game. Uh, boom, boom, that's three, four... And we restarted. Let's try it again because I kind of died off screen. Uh, I just want to make sure everything works. Three, four, and we'll wait for another enemy. Five. Perfect. So now it waits and then it respawns um, or restarts the game, which is exactly what we wanted. So uh, I think that's where I'm going to end this one. Thank you so much for watching and uh, be sure to leave your comments or suggestions in the comments below. And if you really like this series, support me on Patreon. I don't have any uh, Patreon supporters yet, so if you're the first one, you'll definitely get a mention and would make me very happy. Um, but otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and have a great day. Peace.